Hey everybody, um, I'm going to be talking about uh, Garbage Collection in V8 today. I, um, I am Irina, and I'm Irina on Twitter.com, and I, 0.2% of the time I'm funny, um, but <laughs> only 0.2% of the time, stay around for those. Um, so the reason why I decided to kind of explore this idea of um, what is V8 and what is garbage collection. Um, I've been writing JavaScript for some time and I've actually never kind of looked into what runs behind, z behind the scenes, right? And I've spoken to a bunch of people over the past couple of weeks as I was researching the subject and it turns out actually not that many people know what it is. In fact, I was talking to somebody who's been writing JavaScript for 12 years and he only f dug into it or um, a couple of years ago, or like a year or two ago, and then he kind of, um, we all kind of agree that this kind of knowledge helps us write better JavaScript. So I don't write React, unfortunately, but I do write JavaScript. So this one's going to be a little bit more JavaScript oriented than React oriented, which are the two, th two of the same things. Cool. So V8. Um, what is V8? V8 is basically um, a thing that compiles, an engine that compiles and executes your JavaScript in the browser or in Node. Um, it can do either or. Um, so V8 takes your JavaScript and just executes. Um, it uses something called a generational garbage collection or um, also a stop the world garbage collection, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so, as I was kind of exploring into what it is that's generational garbage collection, because this is only this is used in V8, and this is not used in uh, kind of uh, something that you would be doing in C, C or C++ or anything like that that actually has kind of these garbage collection ideas. JavaScript doesn't actually have one. Um, so what is JavaScript? Uh, so what is garbage collection? It has to do with uh, memory management. And memory management is something that's very familiar to those of you who write maybe Java or Swift or anything of that sort. Um, you normally have access to be able to control how much memory your application is use, uses and you're able to reference kind of the things that take up memory. Uh, in JavaScript, uh, this, is basically, um, this is basically done in V8 because ECMAScript doesn't provide uh, an interface to be able to access uh, anything of the memory. So V8 takes care of that for you, which is kind of neat because then we as programmers don't have to worry about um, thinking about how much memory this is going to take up or anything of that sort. Um, but it causes some, um, some issues that we might run into that um, we should be aware about and maybe write better JavaScript. Cool. Um, so like I said, memory management basically just gets passed on to V8. Um, my sketches are not as good, <laughs> uh, but uh, so basically, I kind of wanted to um, to kind of talk about uh, how do we even um, get into this kind of memory management. So to be able to get into that, we should talk about a typical frame in the browser. So what happens is that we have a user that um, wants to provide an input um, into a very cute website. Um, and as it provides input, we trigger some JavaScript DOM events. And once those get triggered um, in the frame, we apply our styles. And once those get triggered, we get the web page. And then it kind of just keeps looping and looping and looping and looping. Right? Um, so this is a typical frame. A typical frame takes, out, uh, takes up about 60 seconds. Um, and all those things um, are happening within that frame. About 16 milliseconds of that is supposed to be triggered to garbage collection. And so if we go back and um, kind of look into where, what even triggers that, we should look into um, the concurrency model. So memory uh, gets triggered within the heap. So the heap is what, um, what stores your memory. It's very unstructured, so there's no particular placement as to what goes where. Um, it's just a chunk of memory. So eventually that memory gets filled up. And once that memory gets filled up, you get the lag or uh, you get the jank. Um, and so that is when the garbage collector gets triggered. But in terms of the concurrency model, so you have that heap and you have the call stack. And the call stack is basically all the actions that uh, Kind of we trigger with our JavaScript, so that could be just like your console.log, 
or anything of that sort. So it just kind of goes down as it as it progresses and takes it off as um, the thing gets finished. Um, so the heap or memory gets overloaded once um, there's too many things that get added to the memory. So then how do we add those things to the memory? Uh, so that gets, um, if you ever call new on an object, um, that allocates a portion of memory. So that one's pretty obvious because you're calling new, so you're allocating a specific buffer uh, to be able to be added to the heap. Um, so that's pretty obvious, but there's a bunch of um, different things, and some, some of them um, are pretty obvious, but other ones are not so. So, for example, we're working within the frame and we're assigning a variable, um, a variable A. In fact, let's just pop into Vim and kind of talk about it that way. Very kawaii. <laughs> I went to Japan with that, they liked it a lot, so I thought it was okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna open up. Cool. So um, let's I, I'm mostly a node developer, so I'm just gonna var new option. So I'm just going to say, okay, so we have this cool new object um, that we're going to call, but that object is basically and um, requires us to call a new, new object. I'm very creative. <laughs> <laughs> so something like this basically uh, takes up memory in the heap. So this is something that gets allocated memory. Um, something that's a little bit less, um, just as obvious, I guess. Uh, so the next step would be just assigning a variable. So a variable object, um, very cute object. Uh, that is So something like this is also taking up memory. So also kind of obvious. So you have an object that's obviously going to take up memory. Um, but once we um, go into a little bit deeper, if we um, say, OK, I actually, so what I want to do is add another key. Um, this also takes up yet another portion of your memory because it creates another pointer. So if we go back to kind of this object, um, what what the what um, the garbage collector does is it creates kind of these uh, references, and what these references are are to the objects that you create. So you'll obviously have this one, but then you will also have something like this. And then you will also, um, if you create an addition of just var one is a and var two is b, two times one in root scope. <laughs> will also create something else in, in the memory. So modifying an object, as well as creating an object, takes up space. So let's go back to the concurrency model. Cool. Um, so what the garbage collector then goes and says, OK, so I need to figure out what it is 
um, that's dead or alive. And um, if we're looking at the um, at the browser in general, most of the times you'll say that um, anything that's alive is on the root scope. So if you were to say, okay, document onload, um, and I'm going to assign just a regular global variable that stays alive forever because it's a global variable. So generally all the alive objects are considered are going to be there for the lifetime of your program. And so the garbage collector will just leave them. Um, if you're just using a variable within a for loop, you're assigning it within the for loop, it clears. So next time the garbage collector goes through it, it will clear it through the memory. Um, but all the DOM elements, so the ones that come with your APIs, stay as is. So allocating, allocating memory kind of with this new um, or just creating an object is pretty cheap and fast. But when we, uh, when we talk about kind of the performance and when the jank comes into play, uh, what basically causes the lag is the fact that the garbage collector has to pause, which is why it's called um, uh, the stop the world. Um, it has to pause the frame and it has to cr clear off the stuff that was um, blocking basically in the heap because the heap is too full. So until the heap is full, you're, you're kind of allocating memory, allocating memory, and that doesn't take up space. But once you have to stop everything to be able to clear up extra space is when you get uh, janks. So V8 uses a generation, generational garbage collector. And what that means, um, it's a little bit different than like um, the other ones that come into play with um, kind of the ones you, you can uh, put together with Java or Swift or anything like that. So generational means that you're looking at kind of this young generation that just got created and something that was a lot older. So those that get assigned to your root scope, cuts, cut off, um, I'll tweet it. <laughs> 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 um, so, so then the older generations are the ones that have been there for a while. So those are the variables and the objects that you've assigned and you continuously keep using. So those get um, left alone. And in fact, V8 just kind of leaves them alone, which means the performance on the older ones when it runs through, um, through your heap to clear stuff off is a lot faster because the older objects you don't have to deal with as, as when you have to deal with the young ones. Um, and I call them the millennials because that's funny. <laughs> so the old and the, the kind of again the the interesting part about it is that the older objects don't usually intermingle with the younger objects, right? Because they've been created a while back, they won't have a reference to the younger object. So it's the younger objects that will kind of interact with the older objects in general, and that kind of increases the performance of the entire thing. Like I said, objects don't usually mingle with younger generations, which makes it. So I was kind of trying to um, also look into this whole idea of pointers and actual objects. Um, so anytime you create a variable or an object, your var declaration is um, a pointer to whatever the object is. And the object is whatever you're declaring, but then instances of that object. So for example, if you want to get the first element from that array, you're also looking at a pointer. So everything just kind of keeps pointing at one another and that's how the garbage collector will s see the references. So you don't have to deal with them. Cool. So um, I, I wanted to like point out, so there's a bunch of, I, I was, these are kind of the things that I was looking in um, <coughs> when working with this kind of thing. Um, there's a bunch of references I kind of wanted to pass on and I will show them. Um, and then if we want, we can go through, um, actually, uh, we can go through uh, actually maybe running a V8, but I'm not sure if it's going to work because <laughs> I had trouble over the, I had a lot of trouble over the weekend. <laughs> um, so there's a really cool thing that I've been just kind of reading through and there's a lot of interesting information. It's not particularly related to JavaScript. So it has a bunch of stuff that just like doesn't make sense in JavaScript because we don't deal with it. 
or even VA doesn't deal with it. Uh, it's the memory management reference. Uh, I just like reading through the glossary. Uh, it's actually like, genuinely very interesting information. <laughs> like a bunch of stuff that is most of it is not relevant to JavaScript but it's just kind of interesting um, there's another one that's uh, I find it a little difficult to parse through so it's uh, it's just somebody's notes uh, if you looked into the v8 proof um, and there's uh, I think the the best one is probably the v8 garbage collector that just kind of takes you through um, what pointers are, what's, what's a data object, and stuff like that, which is kind of interesting, and then you kind of get into the young generations and the old generations a little bit more, um, which is neat. Uh, it's, it's in point form, so sometimes you just have to look into the source. Uh, there's also a bunch of, uh, I, I found it useful to kind of look at to, uh, what Google sometimes does during their, um, during their, what do they call the IO events, I think is what they call them. Uh, sometimes they talk about V8, sometimes they don't, but it's interesting in the same uh, way. Uh, so actually, if I have some time, maybe I'll try running. So I have this, I have uh, this very nasty project. So this project is uh, is kind of slow in general because uh, if we and I'm not I didn't write this I'm just kind of maintaining it trying to fix it over the past little while uh, actually what's here No, I'm sorry, I don't think I remember. <laughs> um, so that's kind of, I, I'm open to questions, basically. Um, just because this is probably not going to work. Live demos, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it will be there until the garbage collector clears it. And how is the tree working? Um, how is the what working? The, the, the garbage tree. Basically, you, you build a graph and then you go through all the nodes and then you uh, flag the ones. I, I unfortunately don't know how the garbage tree works. <laughs> it's probably... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, um, I try to actually. I found it um, so I will do. Um, I won't use um, for in, for example. So I'll just use a regular for loop because that's a lot faster and that doesn't create extra 
and that clear is it, it's it's a younger generation, so clear faster than like the older generation doesn't create stuff into the older generation. Um, there is also things like well root variables. I think we were kind of taught that would it were never explained as to why don't we don't create root variables. So I would um, there's also that. Uh, there is kind of like a thing, so if you're using a for each loop, uh, an interesting portion that I didn't know and that was kind of cool is that, so you will have a specific operation you're dealing with and there's something about an optimized mode and an optimized mode. So uh, the V8, when it compiles your code, it'll also optimize it. But with certain things, like if you're running a for each loop and you're doing an operation within that for each loop, that sticks to... Um, that can get optimized, but if you just abstract it out into another function, then the V8 can optimize it be better, so then you don't have that lag. Um, and then it just leaves it in the younger generation and doesn't pass it on to the next generation in the, in the next frame. Does it also apply to map and reduce functions? Or no? Ma map is like, a, map is, uh, you should use for, if, for loop instead of a map because Map um, is a for in, I think, in in the back end or in the way uh, in the way ECMAScript compiles it. Hey. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like I, I like <laughs> like <laughs> like <laughs> it just like it depends, right? So if you're if you're just uh, working with like a smaller, if you're building a game and you're using map. Um, probably not a good idea, especially if you're mapping over a large set of objects, but if it's a smaller set of objects and you're not, um, you're not modifying the object, you're probably okay, right? Like the modification of an object is like the, sus the suspect you think about when, when you get that jank because modification of an object creates another pointer um, in the heap. But I, I would assume that if, you, if I use map, that it will be somehow optimized by the it doesn't get as optimized as like a regular for loop. Yeah. Okay. So what if, um, I mean, if, if I build a library like Lodash or Ronda, um, it would be actually smarter to do a regular for loop inside. Um, yeah. 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 Then, oh, shit. <laughs> like. <laughs> I think this is what Lodash uh, does. Yeah, does it do that? I don't know. I, 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 think it, I think it falls back to like we, really simple stuff under the hood. Yeah, but does it fall back or does it like always do it? That would be interesting. Do, do, do we want to look into the low dash yeah, source code? Exactly, but I know that one of the libraries, like underscore low dash, did that. I think, I think low dash did it in the, in the beginning at least. And it was like, I don't know. I, I, I actually, I've used low dash like once and then I just went back to writing my own stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> try around that. Yeah, try around that. <laughs> no, I used underscore. This is why the repo is looking unfamiliar. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm assuming they're doing the same thing, though, right? <laughs> yeah. No, they, yeah. They, they, they actually differ in this uh, regard. In the way they, so, they... Right, so because one of them encourage or uses, like, native function that marks, and another tries to optimize for these edge cases, like, like V8 optimizations. And I think there was um, JavaScript perf enforcement where, and I can't remember what was faster yeah. right now, yeah. but it was kind of funny. But but if you talk to uh, Vyacheslav Igor, who is basically one of the contributors to, to V8, he told me once that all you know about performance today is basically obsolete by tomorrow because we try to optimize for these such cases every day. So kind of try to not over optimize. This message to me. <laughs> it seems like underscore is the one that does the fallback to... Okay. Yeah, because they, they basically write their own map. Yeah. Like, they they write their own functions. I am, I don't know, Lodash. Do you know what's up with the delete keyword, why we should not use it? Because it, it modifies the object, right? Oh, yeah. But that's my, I don't, I... I don't like modifying the original object from anyway, like a programming yeah. perspective. Um, I would rather create a new instance of an object and then 
keep a clear one, which doesn't suit to this talk, I guess. <laughs> hey. So, um, what do you think about uh, prototypal inheritance or, like, in general, the, the prototypal behavior? Is it, like, so much faster that it's sometimes useful? Or do you use it a lot? Um, I've used it in some projects. Um, not from the performance perspective, but more on the, like, from a aesthetical, programmatical perspective, it seemed a lot easier just because I was working with other packages that were also prototypical, and then when you combine the two together, it works. Um, I'm not sure from the pers I, I'm not sure about the differences. I haven't looked at the benchmarks. That would be kind of actually interesting to look at. Yeah, because sometimes you see that people try to avoid the new keyword now and try to make like just function constructors which just return a new object and not like really generating a prototypal object. Kind of, so. Yeah, because um, so what new does is it allocates a buffer and I think I might be wrong on this, but when it allocates a buffer, it's over eager as to how much uh, buffer space there is. Somebody should look it up though, because <laughs> yeah. I might be sh bullshitting you basically. Um, but I think like when when you create a liter like a literal object, um, you you're able to I guess allocate as much space as it is. Another thing is like I, I I didn't know this until maybe two months ago, but instead of like creating an empty variable and then assigning stuff to it, you should like if you know the variable is going to be an array, you should make it an empty, like if you know it's going to be a string, just assign an empty string to it, because then V8 knows that you're going to put string in there, so it allocates a proper amount of space. Who knew? If you know, that's cool. I didn't know. <laughs> hey. Um, hi. I wanted to ask, uh, is there some API to get insights of the garbage collector or control it? So, for example, you could query what's the, how much space is left on the heap or now no. would be a good time to run the garbage collector because... No, not in, not in, there's like ECMAScript does not provide an interface to that, which is crap. So then you have to, so <laughs> what you do, you basically have to run an instance of V8 in, in your project, which I uh, did over the weekend and it was a bit of a pain in the arse. <laughs> um, so then you would have to see like how much space, uh, like if you run a particular function, how much time of like V8 takes up or sorry, the garbage collector takes up based on your frame. So it provides like a graph that you can use um, in your Chrome DevTools to figure that out. But there's no API, basically. And then even if you optimize for V8, it doesn't tell if it's working well in Firefox or other things. Yeah, so then you would have to look at the spider monkey. Yeah. Hey. Um, are uh, references shared between the, the friends? Um, I don't know about workers, but it's single threaded, right? So. No. No. We have to work this it. No. 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 Work is a, a, sing, a, new a new thread. That's the joke about workers. Yeah, and, and <laughs> yes, JavaScript is not single threaded at all. It has its own library uh, below that does the multi threading. It has like, like two different. Well, the, the separate thread would be like uh, all the like set timeout and stuff, but essentially your code is going to run. Thread. Yeah. Yeah, you can obviously access the bindings, and that's how, if you access the bindings, you're going to be multi-threaded, yeah, but, but I don't think. Do they share the same memory pool? Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. I would, they would have to, because V8 would compile it to the single code, I think. But, again, I...